Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High. Let me tell you a story. In 1984, I bought my first computer, a Micro-B, and I had a whopping hard drive of 64,000 bytes. My next computer, a few years later, had a much larger capacity. In this case, it had a whopping 40 million bytes. A few years down the track, well, then I definitely took a step up and went to 2 billion bytes. My current system, combined storage, is now approximately 10 to 12 trillion bytes. Those numbers are huge, but I think most of you probably are aware that my first computer was 64 kilobytes, my next computer was 40 megabytes, then I had 2 gigabytes, and finally I have anywhere between 10 and 12 terabytes. What am I doing here? Well, by using these things which we call prefixes, it allows me to talk about the numbers in different sizes, but now the numbers make better sense. We can't conceptualize what 2 trillion looks like, but we can certainly conceptualize what 10 and 12 are. And this is what the video is all about, understanding what the prefixes mean and how you work with them when you're doing mathematical problems in any of the sciences. Stay tuned. So as you know, in any sort of the sciences where you do measurements, you have a certain unit that you're working with, whether it's meters in terms of length, uh, grams in terms of mass, you name it, you know there's a whole stack of unit. But sometimes we put prefixes in front of that to help make sense of it. And you already know that. You know a millimeter is one thousandth of a meter, and a kilogram is a thousand grams. So there are already two prefixes you know. And so what we want to do is we want to tabulate all those prefixes that we could possibly use in the sciences. Now I'm not going to list every single one of them, I'm going to list mainly the basic ones, and most of them are to the power of three, or multiple thereof. And I'm going to start off with the value of let's say 1, and this is where we don't have a prefix. Of course I can go up bigger and 10 to the power of 3, and then what we do is we put a kilo to represent that number, and the symbol of course is the K. The prefix is of course a little section that goes before the word prefix. 10 to the power of 6 is mega, its symbol is capital M, 10 to the power of 9 is, is of course giga, which is a capital G, and I might add 10 to the power of 12, which is of course our terra, and that's a capital T. Going down the other way, 10 to the power of negative 3 becomes milli, our symbol is M, 10 to the power of negative 6 is micro, which is a Greek letter called the mu, and then finally we have 10 to the negative 9, which is our nano which is the letter N. I could go lower too, I can go to pica, which is 10 to the negative 12, and femto, which is 10 to the negative 15, but these are the most common ones. Now, not all of them are 10 to the power of 3, I could squeeze a few others in there. For example, if I have deca, it's 10 to the power of 1. If I have deci, it's 10 to the negative 1. If I have centi, I have 10 to the negative 2, and centa, 10 to the 2. But these are the most common ones. The thing is though, is that these symbols represent these particular powers, but when you're doing calculations, you must convert them back to the correct SI unit. So for example, let's say I were to measure the length of, let's say, the wavelength. And let's say my wavelength is equal to, was given as 632 nanometers. Well, when I put that into my calculator, I have to replace the N for the power that is associated with it. Now, n is nano, which is negative 9. Now, this is the lots of n's, that's a quick way to remember what nano stands for. So I put in my calculator 632 by 10 to the power of negative 9 meters. Do you notice here, by the way, I've just replaced the n with the negative 9, and this, by the way, is what we refer to as engineering notation. I can also, of course, write this as scientific notation, and I get this by 10 to the negative 7 meters. So you replace the symbol with the value that we have there. Why? Because when we write them in terms with a prefix, the numbers make better sense. 10 kilometers is easier to conceptualize than 10,000 meters. One micrometer is easier to conceptualize than, let's say, one by 10 to the negative 6 meters or one millionth of a meter. And another example, let's say we have 
uh, the frequency of a radio station. And let's say the radio station is uh, 103.1 megahertz. And I need to work out, let's say, the associated wavelength. I then make sure to, to work out the associated wavelength, let's say it's a radio wave, I know that the speed divided by my frequency gives me my wavelength, but now importantly, my speed is 3 times 10 to the power of 8, which is the speed of light. I divide it by the fr uh, frequency, but remember, this has to be the correct ISO unit. So I have to go 103.1 by 10 to the power of 6. And of course, if I calculate that out, I'm going to get 2.91 meters, which is the appropriate length for a radio wave of this particular frequency. I hope this has helped you a little bit about the nature of prefixes and how you use them. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care. Bye for now.